who doesn't love a good train wreck? You know, the beauty of the internet is not only can you watch it transpire, but you can do so at a safe distance and comment on it in real time. It's a dime a dozen thing nowadays. We see companies continually stumble into PR disasters where it gets progressively worse as the hours drag on. And you're, you're sitting there thinking, how can they fuck up this hard and this consistently? And yet they keep doing it. It's, it's like fucking magic. Well, we might have the start of a train wreck beginning right now. I can hear the whistle. I can hear the whistle down the fucking tracks. But to really understand the situation, you need to be filled in on the backstory. So, about two weeks ago, a hike challenge Twitch streamer by the name of Destiny had on a well-known YouTuber by the name of JonTron to debate politics. How do I explain to my daughter incest is wrong? Is it actually wrong? I don't know. This is like a... This is a crazy fucking thing. In einer stolzen Selbsteinschätzung, mutig und kühn, die Führung des Reiches und Volkes fordere. Yes, as you can imagine, things didn't go according to plan. A little bit of a snafu somewhere in there, and John Tron got lambasted by mainstream media. Within a day, everybody was writing articles, talking about how he was batshit crazy, how he had absurd views on things, how he was a secret racist, which apparently not a very good secret if everybody's writing articles about it. Hell, unabashedly so. He's not just a secret racist, he's an unabashed secret racist, which means he's very open about not telling you. Hell, and according to these purveyors of the truth, he was losing subs hand over fist. His fans were abandoning him. I mean, look at these metrics. How is he ever going to fucking recover from that? Well, time to pack it up. Your career is fucking done. I, I hear McDonald's is hiring. No, 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 buddy. I, I don't give a shit about your newest LP. I just want my double quarter pounder with no cheese. Shit. You know who I blame? the fans. They should have been able to spot the early warning signs. The man is named after a fucking Disney villain, for Christ's sake. He even has the fucking bird. How did you not see it coming? Obviously, this olive-skinned son of Iranian immigrants is a hardcore white nationalist neo-Nazi. It makes complete and utter sense. You know, I've heard stories that John, going on a Jew safari jafari, likes to infiltrate bar mitzvahs and recite the 14 words while firing fully automatic weapons at people. Now, I can't confirm that. I'm not a reporter. I've got to wait for the real guys. You know, BuzzFeed and Huffington Post to jump on this fucking story. So now you have the backstory on what happened with John Tron a few weeks ago and the bad press he got in relation to that. Now, the other piece of the puzzle is a video game, Ukulele. Now, this is a game that was kickstarted and made an enormous amount of money because of the names that were attached. It's a spiritual successor made by the people that worked on the Banjo-Kazooie games. So you can imagine there was a lot of hype around it. And from the footage that's been shown, it looks like it's probably a good game. Well, it turns out that JonTron was offered a voice role in the game. A minor part from what I understand, but nonetheless, they offered it to him. And from what people tell me, he is a big fan of the series. So that was probably a big deal to him. I mean, here's the spiritual successor to this game. The people that are working on it, who worked on the originals, want him to come into a voice. How fucking cool is that? But oh boy, here comes NeoGAF. You know who they are. That's the trans rights forum that talks about white privilege all the fucking time. You know, NeoGAF. Well, they caught wind that JonTron was going to have a voice acting role in the video game. They did not take that news too well. And they took it upon themselves to contact the people on the development team to try to persuade them to remove him from the game entirely. For those of you out there who are unfamiliar with how NeoGAF persuades developers to do what they want, just take a look at some archival footage from the last time they had a complaint that they wanted to voice. Hey, look, it's a dead zombie! Are you all to do it? Are you all to do it? This is what the developer had to say about the situation. We recently became aware of comments made by voice artist JonTron after development on ukulele had been completed. JonTron is a talented video presenter who we were initially, two years ago, happy to include as a voice contributor to our game. However, in light of his recent personal viewpoints, we have made the decision to remove JonTron's inclusion in the game via a forthcoming content update. We would like to make absolutely clear that we do not endorse or support JonTron's personal viewpoints, and that as an external fan contributor, he does not represent Platonic in any capacity. Platonic is a studio that celebrates diversity in all forms and strives to make games that everyone can enjoy. As such, we deeply regret any implied association that could make players feel anything but 100% comfortable in our game's worlds, or distract from the incredible goodwill and love shown by our fans and Kickstarter backers. 
So to sum up, JonTron has a debate with Destiny, says a bunch of things that he gets bad press for. NeoGaf catches wind of this and finds out he's involved in a video game. They contact the developers of the game and complain. The developers, in response, pull JonTron's portion of voice acting from their game and explain to the audience that they're doing it because they want all gamers to feel relaxed, because they believe in diversity. Even JonTron himself, after hearing the news, said this on Twitter. Unfortunate to see Platonic remove me from ukulele, but I understand their decision. I wish them the best with their launch. So what's the issue then? They've issued their statement. That's that's where they stand. And John Tron has said, well, I, I'm upset by it, but I, I wish you the best of luck with your launch. So it should be a dead issue. But of course it's not. Because the developers and the publisher couldn't leave well enough alone. Now, people were upset with how they were dealing with this. They didn't like the fact that John Tron had been cut. And they didn't like the explanation that had been given to them. And a good portion of the people that were upset financially backed the game on Kickstarter. So we started to see an influx of people coming into the Steam forums and asking, how can I get a refund? And the reaction was pretty swift. Shit kicked. Multiple threads were made on the Steam forums by people asking, how can I get a refund? I disagree with what you're doing. And every one of them was either banned, locked, or moved, and then locked. Nobody was given a real answer. Other Steam users tried to give them advice on how they could go about it, but nobody on the development or publishing team had anything to say. You can imagine how well that went over. People took it really, really well. But it wasn't just on Steam, it was on their official website too. If you go to the forums, you'll see threads where people are asking, how do I get a refund? I disagree with what you're doing. This is the response they got. Again, this is the official forum for the game. Platonic do not have to refund you. There is no law or requirement for them to do so. You can try using the backer messaging system on Kickstarter to discuss a refund. Platonic, out of their own will, have chosen to refund backers that opted for the now discontinued Wii U version through this system. However, there is no guarantee that they will, and I don't think they should, refund you for this situation. Hope that helps. I am locking this thread. So, not only were people being locked on the Steam forums and banned on the Steam forums. They were now having the threads locked on the official forums. Boy, you know, I'm getting a fucking sense of deja vu. What trash fire recently happened? What shitty fucking Kickstarter trash fire reminds me of this? Fuck, the name escapes me. It's right on the tip of my tongue. Right, right. Oh, God, if I could just... No, you know what? I can't. I, it's, it slipped away. I can't remember what it was. Now, while this was all going on, while people are being banned and having their threads locked on Steam and on the official website, on Twitter, people from the publishing company, Team17, decided it would be a good idea to start shit-talking backers and mocking JonTron himself. Now, these are a couple of the employees. Now, a lot of them locked their profile down almost immediately once stories about this started coming out. Except for a few of them. Just drink it in. So many angry anime avatars. Oh gods, are you working the Steam forums? I am so, so sorry. It's what we do. Ha ha ha. Because you've removed him or because he was in in the first place? Removal. Screw him. I still can't wait for it. Cheers, man. Appreciate the support. So it would seem that this is the individual that's on the Steam forums banning and blocking and locking threads. Of course, he wasn't the only one. Another Team 17 employee uh, happened to like a bunch of tweets. One of them was from Kurt Schilling. Imagine being disappointed you can't get to hear JonTron's voice acting in a ukulele. Now, what was the context of that tweet? What did he, what did he mean by that? Well, I think this clears it up. This was a two-part tweet. Damn, I was really looking forward to hearing JonTron go blurble, blurble, garb, blurble, blurble, garb, an idiot. And then he goes on to say, imagine being disappointed you don't get to hear that in ukulele. What a bunch of lovely people. Not only do they like to like and favorite and retweet and shit talk backers, but now they want to start making fun of the way JonTron sounds. Glarble, glarble, garb, garb, garb. That's, that's fantastic. That is just, that is just great. I wonder why they didn't have that opinion before this started, you know, for the last, what was it, two years that he said they had contacted him? But now all of a sudden they don't like his voice. Now he has a problem speaking, enunciating, saying things in the way they want him to say it. Kind of a dick move. You have all these financial backers that are pissed off. They were pissed off with the original decision and upset about it, but now it's being added to by the fact that the people that are running the Steam discussion forums, the people that are running the websites, forum discussions, employees on Twitter, are basically mocking people that gave money to this, making fun of them and refusing to answer their questions or to give them a resolution to what they feel upset about. I'm not sure what they expect is going to happen once they release this game, if they think that people's goodwill is going to carry it to great sales after they saw how they behave and how their employees treated potential customers over the course of the last two days.
But I am left with one major question that I can't, I can't get out of my mind. If JonTron was too toxic to have associated with this particular endeavor, as they said, we want people to feel relaxed and unwind. We don't want his personal viewpoints tainting their gameplay experience. But yet, they'll take the money of Kickstarter backers who agree with JonTron or are fans of JonTron or didn't see anything that he said as being wrong. Now, if you want people to feel relaxed and unwind and not have a tainted project, shouldn't you be offering refunds? I mean, you don't want to take the money of bigots, do you? How, what are you going to tell that diverse trans kin pony spirit when they find out that a mean old white nationalist gave you five bucks on your Kickstarter? Do you want that blood money making your video game? I mean, shouldn't you refund everybody that asks for it if they tell you that they're a, I don't know, a bigot? Because again, you don't want your product tainted with that toxicity, right? That's why you got rid of JonTron, so you should get rid of backers that do the same. You should give them back their money, because that's your principled moral stand, right? Because you really believe the shit that you're spouting, yeah? Well, it's roughly been about 48 hours. A lot of pissed off financial backers, people talking about it on different social media sites, complaining about it on different forums. The only people that seem to be happy would be fucking NeoGAF, who are quite literally celebrating the fact that JonTron got thrown off the project because he's a terrible individual. At least that's, that's their opinion on it. They are glad they, they won this battle. They are glad that the developer acquiesced to their demands and got rid of JonTron. Personally, from my viewpoint, again, I think it was the wrong decision. I disagree with what they did, but it is their product to do with as they please. However, that cuts both ways. They can make a decision on what they want to do with their product. Potential customers and financial backers can make a decision on what to do with their money. If you want to take this route, you need to be prepared to face the consequences of upset, angry people and trying to block them and ban them and lock the threads and basically tell them to go fuck themselves is a really terrible approach.